Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at adding subtitles into our games. Now, the reasons for this are quite self-explanatory, so we're just going to get straight into it. But first, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's doing. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. All right, so the first thing we've got here is this voice clip. Let's play it. There we go, you can hear that again. And what we want to do at the end of this, we want to be able to trigger this, and I'm just going to use a standard on trigger enter event. You can do this any way that you like. And the end goal is going to be we want that audio clip to play, but we also want a subtitle inside of our game view. So let's start out by creating a 3D object. We'll size this up on the X and the Y, and we'll just disable that mesh renderer, and we'll also make this on trigger. So when a character walks through this, we want to play this clip. So the first thing that we're going to need is an actual vocal manager. So if we create a new C-sharp script, call that vocals, and then open it up in Visual Studio, we can get rid of start and update. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to make this a singleton. Now, you, again, you could do this any way that you like. I'm just using a singleton because it's wow. While I'm recording, go away. Uh, I'm just using a singleton while it's easy to implement. So let's knock in our await method. I'm going to make a public static vocals instance. And we're just going to set instance equal to this. I do have a tutorial on singletons. If you're interested in learning more about those, I'll pop a link up in the top right corner. And we're also going to need an audio source on this. So just to make it a little bit more automated, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a private audio source, call that source. And inside of our start method, we're going to set source equal to component audio source. So we don't need to do any setup inside of our inspector. This will take care of that for us. Next, we want a public method called say. And for now, we're going to pass in an audio clip. And all that's going to do, first of all, we're going to check if our source is playing. We'll call source.stop. So if we're already saying something, that'll avoid the overlap. And then we can do source.play one shot and pass in our clip. So that should be up and running. If we go over to our first person controller, grabbing our vocals manager, then I'm just gonna set up a quick trigger for this audio clip. And there we go. So this is a sample trigger script. So on trigger enter, if the tag of the object that's collided with this trigger is player, then we're gonna call vocals.instance.play and then pass in a vocal clip. Now, if we attach that to our vocal trigger and then set up a voice clip inside, double check that I've got this. I don't have this tagged as player, so we're going to tag our player as player. Hit play, and let's see if this works. Right, so we have our audio triggering, but now we want this subtitle. So let's create a quick canvas, and inside of our canvas, we're going to add a text mesh pro element. Now let's just quickly set this up, zoom out, rename this to be subtitle text. We'll center that, put it at the bottom and just make it look a little bit better. Perfect. So again, we can use another singleton to control our UI elements. We'll just create a new script, call it UI, open this up in Visual Studio. This time we'll use a serialized field, and this is going to be a text mesh pro UGUI, pro UGUI, and then we remember to import TM Pro, and this is going to be our subtitle text. And again, public static UI instance, and in our await method, set instance equal to this. Next, we'll have a public method, and that's going to be set subtitle. We're going to pass in a string. And all that's going to do is it's going to set subtitle text dot text equal to subtitle. Now, if we could quickly just drag this in, 
drag a subtitle text into our script element. If we were to, during our say method, call ui.instance.set subtitle to be, wow, I can't spell. Hello, guys. This should work, but obviously it's not how we should be doing it. So there we go. It does. It sets the hello, guys. But we want a way to actually pass all this in as a single object. So our audio clip and our subtitle. So let's do this using scriptable objects. I'm going to make a class called audio object. I'm going to get rid of mono behavior and make this inherit from scriptable object. Remember to do the create asset menu, file name equals new audio object, and then menu name equals asset slash new audio object. And inside of here, all we're going to want is a public audio clip, which is a clip, and also a public string, which is going to be the subtitle. So if we save that, now we can access audio object. If we come back to our vocal script, and in our say method, instead of passing in an audio clip, we'll pass in an audio object. Now, instead of just playing the clip, we'll play clip.clip, and we'll set our subtitle to be clip.subtitle. We'll set an audio object as our clip to play, and we'll pass that into our vocals.say. All right, so you may be able to see where this is going now. If we right-click our Assets folder, Create Assets, we now have a new audio object. Give that a name. And then up in our inspector, you can see we have two fields. We have a clip, which is going to be a voice clip. And we also have a string input. And this is where we're going to type a subtitle for that voice clip. So that's, hi guys, Mike here from... Comp3 Interactive, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so now go back over to our trigger event where we're going to trigger this and pass in our audio object instead. So now when we play, we should go through and we trigger our subtitle. But now we see it doesn't clear. We want this to clear. So let's go over into our UI script and we'll create a public void clear subtitle. And that's just going to set subtitle text dot text equal to nothing. And we want this to happen when the voice clip is finished playing. So the way that we're going to do this, we're going to do this with a core routine. So this one's going to be private because we're not going to be calling it outside of this class. That's going to be any numerator. And that's going to be clear after seconds. And we're going to pass in a float of a delay. And all we're going to do, we're going to yield return new, wait for seconds, and pass in the delay. Once that's happened, we can clear the subtitle. Now we want to call clear after seconds when we set our subtitle. So that will be start core routine, clear after seconds. And then we want to pass in this delay. So we're going to need a float delay into our subtitle as well. And then finally, in our vocal script, where we actually set the subtitle as our second parameter, we're going to pass in clip dot clip, our audio clip dot length, which is the amount of time in seconds that that voice clip goes on for. So now, if we were to play it, what we can also do as well during a awake method while we've already got it, we'll do clear subtitle straight away. So by default, we're going to have no subtitle there. Click play. You see our subtitles disappeared. And then uh, subtitle automatically clears when the voice has finished speaking. And there we go, adding subtitles into your game is just that easy.
Now you can build on this and make an actual conversation system. So instead of just the method that says say, you could actually have a start conversation, pass in an array of these audio objects, play through them one by one, and the subtitle will automatically keep up as long as you keep to this format. So there we go. I hope you've learned something today, guys, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.